Hello and welcome to the D, an A of Home Interiors, the podcast which is all about empowering you to make confident interior and furnishing decisions for your home. I'm Audrey, founder of Audrey Whelan Interior Design. And I'm Deirdre, founder of youfurnish.com, such 100 plus furniture retailers on one website. The DNA of Home Interiors is proudly sponsored by checkatrade.com. If you need help with your next home improvement project, you can search from over 39,000 recommended, vetted and monitored trades on checkatrade.com. So Audrey, sticking to a budget and figuring out how much you spend on your home decor is probably a big topic of discussion uh, between couples trying to figure out how much you spend. And I'm really interested to sort of figure out how would you look at it and how much would you advise spending? And now the reason that this interests me so much is that if we think of buying a house, I think most people, they go to the bank and they figure out how much of a mortgage that they can get. And let's say it's 400k. They're pretty much looking for a house for your max budget at 400k. Now, none of us go out when we're looking to buy our car and think, I'm going to buy the most expensive car that I can possibly get a loan for. So uh, so we're not all driving around in Aston Martins. So where does furniture and your home decor project fit within that spectrum? How do people decide how much they're going to spend? Yeah, really good question. Yeah, well, I mean, the truth of the matter is, from my experience anyway, a lot of people don't really think about it um, until they've made that commitment to the mortgage and the house. And then they start to realise actually how much this is all going to add up to. Um, But often those people still have found one or two items that they have their hearts set on. So that might be that they really want to wallpaper a particular room in this paper they've seen that's like £100 a roll or something, um, or £100 a metre for that matter, God forbid. Um, Or they've seen, you know, a sofa in a shop window that they really want, but it's quite an expensive one. And they're so tempted to just dive in and commit to these one or two things that they've seen. But actually, if they do, then, you know, they're finding that the rest of what they really, really need in their home will either have to wait or will have to be compromised because they've um, prioritized, you know, a certain few items um, uh, at a much higher cost. So what I always advise people to do, um, as painful as it sounds, is to uh, start a spreadsheet and to write down every single item that they are going to need or want um, or both um, in that property. So room by room writing down. And so I'm saying uh, like I'm looking at one of my lists here like for a reception room and we've got large sofa, we've got two armchairs, we've got an ottoman, we've got a rug, we've got a side table, we've got a floor lamp, we've got a table lamp, we've got a pendant light, we've got a mirror, for the chimney breast and we've got some cushions so they're the key items that would need to go in now they're the things that would be purchased but then of course depending on the condition of the property there might be some labor costs needed as well so perhaps the room needs to be decorated perhaps a new floor needs to go in so you know are you going to do the decorating yourself Um, if you've got the time and the skill to do so. Um, If that's the case, then, you know, on your spreadsheet, you need to enter the cost for paint and for, you know, general materials uh, for carrying out that work. If you're not doing it yourself, then obviously you need to add in a line for the cost for somebody else to do it. So, when you've got the list of all the things that you require for each room and you could just start with one room to begin with to take it sort of piece by piece and um, then I would suggest going through the items you've written down to purchase so the the large sofa the armchairs the ottoman and so on and if you don't know what sort of price these things typically cost like how much is your average sofa well you know there's a huge price range in sofas available and um, 
So go on the internet and look up some sofas and see what's starting to catch your eye. Don't worry about the specifics at this stage. Just look at the type of thing you like and see how much does it cost. Are some of them coming up at £1,000? Are some coming up at £5,000? Are some coming up at £500? You know, what what are we looking at? And take an average of that figure of what you're seeing and what you like and put that into your spread sheet and then go through each item and do the same thing. Now it might be for some items that there's actually something you have seen like I mentioned earlier like something in a shop window. Maybe you've seen an amazing rug and you know that it costs 800 pounds. Put that in. And then when you've completed that exercise, if you don't need to do any uh, workmanship, obviously it's a slightly easier exercise because you can just look at the costs that you've found, add those costs up or let Excel or whatever you're using, add them up for you um, and see what that total is coming to and see if you're shocked by that total. And if you are, and if you feel like that's too much, then obviously you're going to have to reevaluate. So when you looked at all these items online to get these guide prices, um, you will have been aware that there would have been lower prices and higher prices. So you'll start to see that to come down in price then uh, of your total spend, you're going to have to go back and work a bit harder on some of these choices. But at least if you can arrive at an overall budget that you feel comfortable with, then you know that you can achieve somehow or other, you know, the items that you want to put in that space. Now, if you have workmanship to include in that, what I would suggest at this stage, if you're not doing the work yourself, is that um, you get some quotes So we did actually record a podcast episode a while ago about getting quotes from tradespeople uh, with our guest from Checker Trade. And, um, you know, the purpose of this at this early stage would be that you could factor that into your budget. So I think what's really useful here is that if you've got a decorating cost, say for that room, it's looking at like um, £700 to decorate that room you put that cost in maybe you don't really really need to decorate the room but you've got that cost you can weigh it up against all the items you'd ideally like to buy and if the budget is too high another way to approach it is to say well actually let's spread this out over time so I am going to do the decorating but I'm going to hold off on getting a few of those accessory items and the rug and the lighting you know for a bit further down the line or as I said if you don't really feel you need to decorate then perhaps you'll buy the items and in a you know a couple of years time perhaps you will then um you know do do the decorating work so that that's phenomenal Audrey and I think that's a really sort of clear process and a nice process to follow that's very uh, simple and understandable but what I'm keen to understand is that So I've put all the items together and let's just say I'm decorating my my living room, as you suggested there, and all those items come out at 10,000. You know, is 10,000 a good amount to spend? Is it too much to spend? Do I start off with the figure roughly in my head before I actually pull that whole list together? How do you find that people get comfortable with an item? Because if I've never furnished a room, as an example... I literally don't have ideas. 10,000, a lot of money to spend or maybe I should be spending five or maybe I should be spending 20. So funny that you have picked that number 10,000 out because often when it's a living room um, and people ask me how much on average does it cost to furnish a living room, I would say, well, you could very easily spend 10,000 pounds. So that's not difficult. But that's not to say that you can only do it if you have 10,000 pounds to spend. So it's really all about, you know, what you're happy with in terms of those individual choices. There's some really, really reasonable things out there, but you will be weighing up, you know, the quality and how long it's going to last you and maybe, you know, uh, sustainability for some people might be an important one. So everybody has their own kind of priorities in terms of what's important to them. So for example, a sofa you're going to sit on, it's going to get loads of wear and tear. Uh, Something like, um, a uh, 
and maybe a side table or um, a, a lamp on a table or a floor lamp. These are items that won't get as much wear and tear. Um, so arguably sort of spend the money on the things that maybe, you know, need to last and need to be a bit more harder wearing. And the other things, you know, will probably last just as long because they won't have had to kind of work as hard. So you can prioritize things in that way. But I would say, you know, it, it's pretty impossible most of the time to just kind of have a figure in your head just that you pluck out of the sky. Um, and yeah. so I think, you know, the value in this exercise is arriving at that figure, but also it's having the sum of the parts, if you like. It's having like the individual um, components uh, that get you to that figure. And I think you have a better sense of control then over your spend because you can tweak or remove or defer elements of that. Uh, so it's not just, can I afford that total of 10K or can I not afford it? You know, as I said, you can spread things out and that's another approach. Yeah. So what I find really interesting about what you've just said, I think there's two things. And the first is that you're right. You don't have to get everything the most expensive item. And I always think that maybe it's the sideboard or the side table. So it's in the background. It's um, going to be there for a little bit of storage, but actually it's not going to be used very often. So I'd rather spend more money on my sofa that I'm going to be sitting on. I want it to be super comfortable. So I'm willing to splurge on that item. But actually, on the other side, it means that I'm going to have to downgrade maybe the ideal side table and, and buy a cheaper one that will still look good, but it might not be as durable because it's not getting as much wear and tear. That's probably OK. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, then also it might be that, you know, you've got somebody who can maybe give you a few things that they no longer need or you find some secondhand things or some things on free cycle or something. But in the same vein, they mightn't be the things that are your absolute ideal, but they might be placeholders. So, yeah. you know, like to say, oh, just don't have a side table and just don't put that lamp on anything and so on. You know, I mean, it's nicer to live with the functionality of having these things. But if, say, visually or materials wise, you know, they're not absolutely what you want, then, you know, have the placeholder there so you can get on with your life and you Use the room in a functional way, knowing that in time, you know, you're going to be able to uh, upgrade those things. And I mean, I think that's the value of also, you know, thinking through what it is you would like. So, I mean, as you know, Deirdre, I would be like working through the process simultaneous with the budget as to how these things actually look and feel what are they in the room because therefore you're creating that vision of what it is you're hoping to achieve and what you will achieve but you know if you're spreading that out you don't then need to worry oh you know I've got this old battered side table and I really want the other one it's like no you'll yeah. get there you'll get there just you know <laughs> the big ball and steel yeah. approach yes yeah yeah Quick shout out for our sponsor, checkatrade.com. Search recommended tradespeople online at checkatrade.com. I also think a big part of it is, and I was guilty of this, Audrey, um, when I first moved in, I was going to fill the room with furniture. So I made an offer on a place. And in that three months that all the legal stuff was happening, God knows what is happening, um, I had decided I'm going to have a sofa and then I'm going to have a bookcase and then I'm going to have a side table. Then I'm going to have a console table and that's what I'm going to do here. And by the time I got in, I actually realized there wasn't space for all of that furniture. So do you want it to be, you know, super cluttered or maybe take a step back and take some time? I'm a very big advocate of that because I would have done it wrong if I'd gone out and bought everything on day one. So the other thing I, I think is really important, and particularly for first time buyers when you're doing this for the first time, is that you don't need to buy every item of furniture on day one. So you can wait till next month till you get that paycheck and then buy your side table. And then in month two with your paycheck, then go buy the rug. So don't feel the need to have it picture perfect from day one. So maybe just do your purchase in that way. And the other thing, Audrey, and I don't know how many uh, people that you see doing it, but there's actually great options available um, to buy on finance as well. And I'm, I'm thinking of, of myself here. And um, when I bought my sofa, um, it had four years interest free credit. 
So I was like, this is amazing. I've just moved in. I've got all of these expenses, paying stamp duty, whatnot. All of a sudden, my money is less than I thought it would be. So it enabled me to have things in my apartment much quicker than I probably could have done if I had to buy them outright. Do you see many people make use of those types of uh, facilities? Yeah, I do. Yeah, particularly for larger items like sofas or beds. And especially when people want to make that kind of longer term purchase and, you know, living without, say, a sofa or bed is, um, you know, there's some of the trickier items to live without. So I think where that's so beneficial then is that if it enables you to get the right one that you'll have for a long time, rather than having to maybe buy something cheap cheaper that you're going to want to get rid of uh you know so even environmentally and everything just yeah great if you know you can actually get those big items you know f- kind of first time and then yeah accessories and smaller things are easier then to sort of um live without you know temporarily if you if you need to yeah so Deirdre, I'm just thinking a couple of other things that I should have mentioned, just looking on my spreadsheet here. And um, I sort of focused on all the exciting bits, I suppose. Um, but it's really important to factor in delivery costs uh, when uh, working through this budget, because, you know, you can find, you know, a sofa might have like even like a 60 pound delivery cost. You know, some of these yeah. can be quite high. Then some companies may have what appears to be a lowest delivery cost but then when you look in the detail you realize there's a couple of options and the cheaper one will just be to your doorstep and then the more expensive one will be into the room so if you don't have somebody to help you move that you may need to upgrade the delivery option so I would always pop those in alongside the item costs and add them up as well and then obviously if you're getting things from the same supplier you can help you know because then you could you know hopefully have those delivered in one go the other thing to be aware of is assembly so not that companies would necessarily be selling you an assembly service but some may do but it's important to check are the items coming unassembled because if they are and you don't feel it's something that you will be able to undertake and sometimes that can be not because of a lack of skill but it can be because it actually takes two people because of the yeah. size and the weight of the item so you need might need to factor in sort of paying um, a handy handy person handy man handy woman to help uh, with that so it's good to pop these in on the spreadsheet as well so like with the decorating cost if you need needed help with assembly I'd advise getting in touch with somebody who can carry out that work giving them a list of the items asking them how much that will be roughly and then you've got a sum to factor in so you're not going to sort of end up in in trouble over that one. Yeah it's a really good point I bought a beautiful big mirror and uh, when it came we sort of realized it was like well, I don't know how to hang this on the wall. And actually, I'm afraid it'll pull down the whole plasterboard. And, you know, where is there wires for yeah. electrics behind it, even if I drill into it? I really realized I have no clue. So indeed, we had that little surprise cost of having to get in somebody to put up the mirror. Now, yes. it looks amazing. So really happy with it. But it's just all these little surprises that you can anticipate so that you can factor them in. And actually, that's a really good point, Deirdre, because, you know, if you are getting somebody to assemble your furniture, then you may as well factor in, you know, hanging any large items on the walls as well, or in fact, any items, because, you know, like with all these things, if you're getting it all done as one job, the economy of scale is going to be much greater than suddenly realizing um, in the nick of time that you need somebody to hang one mirror. And that's going to feel like a lot more money Mm. to spend than if you've got a whole list of jobs. Than the yes, yes, yes. Which is understandable if somebody's got to travel, do it, yeah, travel back. Yeah. But if you're giving them a half day's work to assemble a whole load of things, then you'll really feel, you know, you've gotten great value. And I have to say on projects before, whenever I've used um, people to assemble furniture, I just feel like it's the best thing ever because it would take me probably, you know, a whole weekend to assemble, <laughs> you know, a couple of items. And then these people come in and they do it like in a couple of hours and you just think, oh, how efficient 
listening so to So where can you find those people, Audrey? Where would you recommend people? So look? I would recommend finding a handyman. So um, I have a handyman that I use um, quite often. Uh, he was based in East London. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's more and more of them on Instagram popping up as well, I've noticed. And yeah, if you Google just in your area, try to find somebody who specializes in like small jobs. So they're not people who are looking to take on, you know, a building project or a decorating project for several weeks or months. They're actually working on small jobs of a few hours in length, mainly. Um, yeah. So they're great people to get in touch with. Indeed. And actually, Check a Trade usually has a very good list as well. If anybody wants to go on there, yeah. you can see the recommendations of people in, in your local area. So one last question for you, Audrey. Um, what advice would you give to the first time buyer out there? Um, they probably can't do your spreadsheet list. They can. But I'm thinking in terms of they've got limited money. You've just paid the biggest amount of money ever in terms of a deposit. Your bank account has probably never been bigger just before it, before it gets completely wiped out. And you've got a full apartment or, or house to, to furnish and you're on limited budgets. So they probably are starting off with quite a strict budget. So it might be 10K to, you know, furnish three, four rooms. What advice would you give to people when you're on a really tight budget like that? Is there any top tips? Well, I would say, you know, back to that placeholder idea, get what you can for as little as you can, you know, to survive. But I still think uh, this budgeting exercise can be really useful in terms of either if you feel that over time you're going to have more funds and you can plan ahead in that way. And that kind of helps you kind of have this vision for what you're trying to achieve, even if you've got to live with very little in the meantime. Or you can also use the budget um, exercise, uh, you know, in a very low budget orientated way. So, you know, if you're going to, you know, the cheapest places you can find to get furniture, we'll start, you know, tossing up what can I get and what should I prioritize? So I think it's a really good way then before you commit to anything, just to be able to see where you should put that spend and what are the f maybe the top three or the top five items that you think you can't live without in a house if you're starting off with a blank canvas what should I, be your priority I think number one for me would be a bed <laughs> yeah I think number two would be a sofa and then dining table and chairs, I would say, next. Uh, now, that's obviously assuming that you've got some functional kitchen and bathroom um, yeah. areas to get on with. But if not, yeah, I think obviously they would need to be really high up that list. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And don't be ashamed if, like me, you need to spend three months on a blow-up mattress because uh, I just didn't get around to actually ordering a bed. And then I went in reverse order. So then I then got a sofa bed and I slept on a sofa bed for about another month. And then I finally got a bed. And, you know, my excuse is actually pretty pathetic. I was actually working so much that I just didn't have a chance. And it's like that thing where you don't want to buy something really impulse. So um, if you need to do that, you know, it's, it's a story to tell in the future future so um don't feel rushed into buying anything if you enjoyed our podcast we would be delighted if you could rate review and subscribe on your favorite podcast provider this will help others who are seeking home and furnishing advice and inspiration discover the dna of home interiors you can find us on instagram facebook youtube and twitter at the dna of home interiors if you are looking for inspiration and help in designing your home interiors, take a look at Audrey Whelan's masterclasses on audreywhelan.com slash events. And don't forget to check out youfurnish.com, a search and comparison website which helps connect people with amazing furniture from over 100 retailers. We designed it to solve the problem we and thousands like us faced furnishing our homes. And now we are really excited that everyone can search, discover, compare and shop for their home all in one place. Thank you to our sponsor Checkatrade.com for their support in bringing this episode to you. And most importantly, thank you all for listening today. We hope you can join us next time.